What's up guys and gals? You having a problem that looks like this? Or maybe that? Yep, me too. If this is what's going on with your quad or it looks like some version of that, more than likely what you're having is a desync. And I'm going to show you how to fix that. You know, right now somebody's saying, oh my God, another desync video. There's a million of them out there. And they'd be right about that. There are. There's a lot of great videos, actually. Uh, Joshua Bardwell, Chris Rosser, UAV Tech. Those guys are absolutely brilliant. You know, they got the engineering type minds. Me, I'm no rocket scientist, but I have experienced this numerous times and I've helped a lot of people fix it. Yet with all that going on and all the videos out there, I am seeing the message boards, you know, the Facebook user groups and all those umpteen places you can go, you know, to talk to like-minded pilots and post your questions and your short videos of what you've got going on. I'm seeing those boards just packed full of this problem. Yet, when you look at the answers in the comment section, I see a variation of ridiculous answers to the problem. Everything from uh, you got the wrong color props on your quad to your heat shrink is too tight. You know, it, it, we know that's not what's going on. You know it. I know it, it. It's ridiculous. But yet, as time has gone on, this issue persists. And it's always going to persist because new pilots are coming into the hobby and people who haven't experienced these problems. There's been this big push for bind and fly. And plug and play, which I think is awesome because, let's face it, who wants to have to build every single quad? It, it is nice to let somebody else do that work, and I'm all for that. But we still have to know how to jump into the configurators and make changes and kind of troubleshoot these things. So as we kind of walk through this video, uh, I am going to show you how to fix that. But one thing we need to understand is that there are, in 2023, there are so many different types of equipment out there and uses. You know, we have F7, H7 flight controllers. We still, there's still a lot of people running F4s too, but these are being coupled with different versions of ESCs, uh, lots of different uh, motor KVs and cell count and all of these combinations, you know, for instance, over here you got one guy or gal flying a two and a half inch quad. Right here we got somebody flying a five inch quad. And over there we got somebody flying a 10 inch quad. All of these different motors and ESC combinations and prop sizes on different cell counts can't have the same settings in the flight controller, clearly, right? better yet, in the ESC configurator. They can't have them. They, there is no one-size-fits-all setting that's going to just make the quad fly. So there's some settings in there that we need to take a look at, probably more than you think, that are going to give us some issues if we don't make those changes. You know, Settings just can't all be the same. I wish it was that simple, but we wouldn't have such awesome flying quads if we did. You know what I mean? So I'm going to walk you through this and we're going to take a look at some things. One thing I do want you to keep in mind, whether you're an experienced pilot or you're a new pilot, there's something to be looking at inside of the configurator that I want to show you that you could probably learn from. I've been doing this 10 years. It wasn't until last year that I really started to understand these things a little more in depth. And I've seen those, you know, amazing engineering mind type videos a hundred times. And yet it's just now starting to kind of click for me in the application. All right, we're going to jump into the ESC configurator. If you have not yet uh, downloaded one, you're going to want to do that now. If you're running a BL Heli 32 ESC, Go ahead and just Google uh, BL Heli 32 Configurator Suite. Download it to your hard drive and then go ahead and just run the setup wizard, get it installed to your hard drive, and then you're going to run it from there. If you're running BL Heli S, you're going to run that right from Google Chrome. So you're going to need a current version of Google Chrome. Once you've got that, you can open up... Uh, 
esc-configurator.com and then we'll just run it right there from that page. Now that you got your configurator downloaded and set up, we're going to go through BL Heli 32 first. Grab your quad. I'm going to use this 5 inch as a uh, example. Make some adjustments on. Take your props off, guys. Take them off. I assure you, it's worth it. I know it's a pain. Take them off. Now we're going to go ahead and get our BL Heli 32 suite opened. Once you got it open, there it is. Go ahead and grab your USB. We can plug it directly into the flight controller. And unlike Betaflight, we're going to have to add power to the ESCs so the ESC configurator can read them. You're going to jump right on in here. We're going to come right to here to this connect. Now, let me just say, you may have to come hit this drop down for the port if it won't connect, but go ahead and hit connect. It should auto populate. You'll get this green box right here. Once it's connected, it'll say disconnect instead of connect right here. I know it's a little strange, but it's the way it is. Next thing we need to do is hit read setup. You're going to get the green box down there again. You're going to have your four ESCs populate here. And then we're going to have found multiple ESC configuration. You should have all four. Make sure they're all there. Uh, it tells you what they are. This is a Speedy B BL3250 amp. And this is the version right here. So it's telling us that the, we're all good frames. So hit OK. And this is pretty much what you're going to see for stock settings. Now, as far as the desync goes, there's two things we want to be looking at. First thing is DMAG compensation right here. DMAG compensation uh, is set at low. We're going to just bump it up one. So you've got a couple of options, but stock is at low or wherever it is. Off, you should never be off, not ever. But uh, you have low, high, very high. So in this case, it was at low. We're going to go to high. The second thing that often seems to get overlooked is ramp up power. Now, I'm going to go into ramp up power a little bit, but we stock settings are at 50%. You do not need to be at 50%. In fact, the larger quads, you really need to be brought it down. Somewhere between 15 and 35% is where we want to be. Uh, we're going to set this one at 25%. Whoops. Actually, we're going to go to 20 on this one. 20%. So we've bumped up the DMAG compensation, bumped down the ramp up power, and that should be it for your desync situation. However, while we're in here, you need to look at something else. If you want to run bi-directional D-shot in a filter by RPM, which is a great thing to do, it'll help your quad fly smoother, come over here to the PWM frequency high and take this all the way up to filter by RPM. Now you can make the adjustments in beta flight and turn on your RPM filtering in your bi-directional D-shot once you have this turned on. All right, now that we've got the settings the way we want them, we have to hit right setup. So now we're going to go through. It's going to load that onto the ESCs. It says that it wrote OK on all, three, all four ESCs. Select OK and disconnect. Now that you're disconnected from the configurator, go ahead and pop that LiPo off of there. Disconnect that USB cable, strap some props on her, take her for a rip, see how she flies. If the problem persists, you have to kind of jump back in there, push that DMAG compensation up a little bit higher, and the ramp up power down, uh, you know, another 5% or something. Kind of take baby steps, see how she goes, but more than likely, that change right there alone will handle it in most cases, but sometimes it needs a little bit more, so you just kind of have to feel her out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and jump into BL Heli uh, S now and do the same process on that one. I'm gonna use this uh, GEP RC Phantom 2.5 or whatever the hell it's called. It's small. Can't believe I gotta say this nowadays, but take your props off, take them off. I recently had it happen 
where my 10 inch spun up while I was uh, plugged into the configurator. And of course I had the props off, but if I hadn't, trust me, it would have been all bad. In 10 years, I've never seen that happen before where it actually did that. But it did that day, so I'm telling you, take them off. All right, let's go ahead and open up your Chrome and punch in right here, esc-configurator.com. And this is what's gonna come up. Like I said, I'm running on Mac. Doesn't matter if you're running on Mac or PC. This is gonna work the same. Plug in your USB cable to the flight controller. Go ahead and give her a little juice. Plug that LiPo in. You may have to come up here and hit port selection. Mine's auto populated, so go ahead and hit connect. Right to here to this bottom right hand corner, hit read settings. Once it reads, it's going to tell you what's going on. So quick run through over here. This is telling you that you've got four ESCs and that you have Blue J. We're running 96 kilohertz on them. We're running firmware GH30 on them. Come over here to the left hand side for this desync issue. Same thing. Uh, DMAG compensation right here. It's stock set to low. So we're going to go ahead and bump that to high. So we're going to give our ESCs and motors the ability to overcome a desync situation. And then let's take a look at this RPM power protection, ramp up power. Now it comes stock set at nine times. We really don't need to be that high. We can bump that down a couple. So I'm going to take this one to seven times. That's going to again improve our chances of uh, low, the low power or torque on the motor. If we get caught up in something, the scraggle, it's not going to burn up a motor ESC if we have it a little lower. So we're protected. Now there is something that's a little interesting. If you look at this check mark here, it says limits how much power can be increased according to how fast the motor is spinning. Lower power values will avoid power spikes, which is what we're talking about, giving us back EMF, but can also decrease acceleration and maximal attainable speed. That is only true to a degree. We're not going low enough to be worried about that. You know, if we went down to one time, yeah, we're going to probably experience that. Uh, maybe even two, three, but, you know, a minor amount is not going to change that. You're not going to sense any of that. We come up here, just hit disconnect. Now that you got your configurator disconnected, go ahead and pull your USB connection off and your LiPo. Strap some props on that baby, take her out for a rip, see how she flies. You know, if you still got a little desync going on, Go ahead and just plug it back in and push that DMAG compensation up, uh, you know, one more notch and the ramp up power down another notch. And uh, you should be good. The vast majority of people, it's already going to be solved at that point. So let me say a couple of quick things in closing, maybe give you something to think about or consider. You know, we covered DMAG compensation and ramp up power. Ramp up power is probably something that we should be most concerned with. The stock value of 50% is just much too high for what we're doing with these things. Uh, I would say in all honesty that, you know, tests have shown and there's plenty of videos out there that 15 to 35% is where we need to be at, especially if you're running five inch and larger props. Uh, you can't get away with, honestly, a 50% value. You just can't do it. Uh, this guy right here is a 10 inch up here in the corner and I'm running 15% on that. Not terribly long ago, I made the mistake of not adjusting my ramp up power. So I was running 50% and it flew for a while. And then I eventually burned up an ESC after probably 20 flights and it landed in the lake. I was fortunate enough to get it back, but it did happen and it was an expensive mistake because as you know, if you're building larger quads like that, your ESCs tend to be a hundred bucks and you know, up each. So it was an expensive uh, learning lesson for me. I wouldn't want to see anybody else go through that unnecessarily. So 
It's certainly something to consider. Now, I know that the objection seems to be because obviously there's a note on that tab that you may decrease your acceleration as you push that number down. But people far smarter than myself have done these tests, like I think it's mini quad test bench, definitely Joshua Bardwell, Chris Rosser again, UAV Tech. And that number, you know, it's a threshold. It's not until you get down below the 10% mark that you start to see any real difference in your acceleration. Even then, some of it's negligible. So, you know, I suggest you mess with it, see what you think, and do what works for you. But uh, I hope this helps. If you have any questions, uh, hit me up, let me know. I'm always happy to help my fellow pilots. Other than that, you guys have a great day. Fly safe, and we'll see you later.